This morning we're going to read about that God again today in Exodus chapter 17. I invite you to go there with me today. Our title this morning, Hands Were Lifted Up. Let's practice for just a moment, can we? Lift up both hands and say, I love you, Lord. Say, thank you, Lord. Say, I need you, Lord. Say, I bless you, Lord. Hands were lifted up. That's the declaration we're going to hear in this story from Exodus chapter 17 today and one of my favorite stories in the Bible. I love stories in the Old Testament where God gets a new name, (laughs) at least a name that is new to us in its revelation to us. And this morning we're going to read the story of a great battle in the Old Testament led by Moses and Joshua, and we're going to hear a new name given by Moses to the Lord. You know, the first name in the Old Testament that is a a compound redemptive name that attaches another name to the name of the Lord is the name Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Back in Exodus 15, verse 26. Now, here we are in Exodus 17, two chapters later, and we're going to receive another powerful name of the Lord today. I'll give you a heads up. It's the name Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner, our standard, our flag that goes before us into war. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner. And so we read today from from Exodus chapter 17, beginning with verse number 8, and let's read together, please. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it The Lord is my banner, he said, for hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. The Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. And everybody said, Amen. Psalm 3 declares, from the Lord comes deliverance. And every person who's ever been given another chance to live, another breath to breathe, another step to take, another morning to wake up to is a recipient of the grace and the mercy and the help of Almighty God. How many of you would agree with me this morning that it's in the Lord that we live and move and have our being? Not only does every good gift come down from our Heavenly Father, But God, as we said last Sunday, has set himself in covenant relationship with his people so that we can declare, listen to these exciting words, we can declare the Lord is our God. So that I can declare the Lord is my God. And we acknowledge this morning that our help comes from the Lord. Moses recognized that in in the story that we've read this morning. It's the story of a great battle and a great victory. Ultimately, it's a story of a great deliverance that came from the hand of the Lord. The Israelites had been brought out of Egyptian slavery by the hand of God. They had marched through the Red Sea on dry ground. God had rained down bread from heaven in the desert and had opened rivers of water for them to drink in the desert. Now they stood in the midst of the desert confronting an enemy army, the Amalekites. 
the Amalekites had declared war on Israel. This was Israel's first war as a nation of people, and the enemy was formidable and frightening. But God's people found out before the end of that day And by the way, I've been listening through the book of Joshua in the last couple of days, and I was reminded that God is able to turn a day so powerfully that it would be said of that day, there was no other day like it, and never will there be again. And the day on which the battle was fought that we read about in Scripture today was such a powerful day, was such a powerful intervention by God, that by the end of that day, the Israelites would find out that the Lord was their banner. The Lord was their warrior. The Lord was their helper. The Lord was their victory. Today I want to talk for a little while about battles that are too big for us. Anybody ever faced one of those? Battles that are too big for us. That was the case for Moses and Joshua and the Israelites in the scriptures today, and that is often the case for us. We face battles that are too big for us. And so I want us to consider together today this strategic Old Testament victory and learn the powerful principles about winning even when the battle is too big for us. How many of you know it doesn't all depend upon you? Say amen. Thank the Lord, there is help from God today. So how do we win when the battle is too big for us? Well, we, we begin this morning by examining the battle fought by the Israelites that day. And I want to say today that this was a spiritual struggle. Now, we acknowledge and understand that this was a physical battle, When we read the stories of the battles in the Old Testament, we know that they were different than the battles that we experience today. Most of you, at least how many of you would would acknowledge to me today that you have not been out sword fighting with anybody this week? Anybody acknowledge? Most of us have not been out with a machine gun this week. We've not been out doing physical, literal battle. And so when we read the stories of the battles in the Old Testament... We understand that these stories were different from the kinds of battles we experience today, but these stories are recorded so that we might understand the principles of relying on God and being able to win victories in our lives in the name of the Lord. How many of you, though you haven't been out with a sword this week, you faced your share of struggles and battles even in the last several weeks or days? We know what it is to fight in the spiritual realm. Well, in the Old Testament, and in this story in particular, there are physical components and spiritual, natural components and spiritual components involved, and this was a spiritual struggle. Verse number 8 says, The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. And you know, this battle had the potential to destroy the Israelites before they ever made it to the promised land. Some of you know what it is to start out on a journey, to be going somewhere, and to be stopped before you ever really get out on the highway and turned around, and the purpose is thwarted, and the journey is stopped, and uh, you have gone nowhere. The Israelites have come out into the desert... And now the Amalekites come against them to to attack them, and, and this battle threatened to stop them from getting to the promised land. In addition to that, the Amalekites were trained warriors. And remember, the Israelites had been slaves and brick makers in Egypt. Now, I would say to you this morning that if you can lob a brick, it's a pretty... It's a pretty, pretty powerful weapon in the right circumstances. But when you're going out to fight an army who are trained for war, brick making is not the best skill to have under your belt. And the Israelites were facing a trained army. In the natural, the Israelites didn't have a chance. And Moses knew right at the start that the answer was in the spiritual. Everybody say the answer is in the spiritual. Say that again. The answer is in the spiritual. 
Moses understood that principle. We face our own spiritual warfare. Today, life is a battlefield. And our enemies are often infused with satanic sway and strategy. That's why we've got to know as well the answers are spiritual. Whatever your battle is today, I urge you to move it into the spiritual realm. It may seem just to be in the natural realm, but if you're a child of God and you're facing struggles in your life, I want to urge you to know the battle is in the spiritual and the answers are in the spiritual. So shove that, listen to me, shove that thing right over into the spiritual. Are you here this morning? Get it over into the spiritual Realm. Moses knew the answer was in the spiritual. And so Moses determined to engage spiritual strategies. This was a spiritual struggle, and these were spiritual strategies. Listen to verse number 9. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses and Aaron and Hur went to the top of the hill. I want you to see here that Moses engaged spiritual strategies in the midst of a physical battle. This is an unusual story because there, there are two clearly delineated battlefields in this story. Joshua... And the soldiers, the troops in the valley below, and Moses and his team on top of the hill praying. It's as if there were a skirmish down here taking place, but there were some up here on top of the hill overlooking the battle, stretching out, reaching out to God, doing the spiritual work while Joshua and the troops were doing the physical work in the valley below. Moses knew that the real battle here would be fought in the spiritual realms at a higher level. And Moses said, as they, as they were about to begin this engagement, this battle, Moses said, I've got to get up higher. I've got to reach up higher. I've got to reach up to my source, to my strength. I'm going to get up on top of the hill. I'm going to lift my hands to God. I'm going to hold on to the staff of God, my staff. <laughs> now, that staff in Moses' hand, had been with Moses all the way since the first day of his calling. Remember, that staff had turned into a snake in the presence of Pharaoh. That staff had turned the waters of Egypt into blood. That staff had called forth frogs and gnats and locusts in Egypt. That staff had brought thunder and hail upon the land. That staff had been used in parting the Red Sea. Moses calls it rightly the staff of God. This is more than Moses' staff. This is God's staff, and it's in Moses' hands. And Moses knew that staff represented to him the Lord's presence and power. And so the battle began. But in the middle of the fray, there were spiritual setbacks. Isn't this the case in many battles that we face? I read a book years ago entitled, Two Steps Forward, One Step Back. The truth is sometimes in the middle of a long war, we have victories and setbacks, victories and setbacks, victories and setbacks. The ultimate goal is to press through and to overcome the setbacks and get to a place where the victory is accomplished in its completion. How many of you know that just because you've had a discouraging day doesn't mean it's time to give up on God and give up on the battle? There are setbacks in life. And in this battle between the Israelites and the Amalekites, there were some spiritual setbacks. Verse 11 says, as long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. We, we would say, well, Moses, don't lower your hands. Sometimes we hear somebody say, well, it hurts when I do this. And, and Kim, as a nurse, what's the answer? Well, don't do that. The scripture says when Moses' hands 
were lowered, the Amalekites began to, to win. This was a clear picture and a powerful lesson to Moses and the people. And the lesson is this. When we trust in the Lord, we prevail, we win, we survive, and we continue. But when we trust in ourselves, are you listening this morning? When we trust in ourselves, we fail, we fall, we flounder, we flunk out. When we trust in the Lord, we win. When we trust in ourselves, we fail. And so there were some spiritual... This was a spiritual struggle. These were spiritual strategies. And there were some spiritual setbacks. But thank God... In the midst of the battle, thank God for the brothers. That's our second thought this morning, the brothers. Who were the brothers in the story? Their names were Aaron and Hur, two of Moses' leadership companions, Aaron, his brother, Hur, his partner in ministry. And the spiritual warfare in this battle was heavy. Verse 12 said, when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. So the first thing we see right here as we think about Moses and his predicament is that even the strongest of the strong and the most super of the super spiritual heroes can sometimes get tired in the battle. Anybody here honest enough to tell me that there have been times when you have grown tired about praying for something? Anybody be honest. The truth is we grow tired in spiritual warfare. And for Moses in this battle, he understood that this connection he was making with God was the determining factor on whether or not the battle was going to be won. And yet he was growing tired. The spiritual warfare was heavy, but thank God the spiritual warriors were helping. Verse 12 says, Aaron and Hur held his hands up one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remain steady till sunset. <laughs> Here is Moses, tired. His hands begin to fall. His arms begin to waver. But Aaron and Hur get one on one side, one on the other, and they lift his hands to the Lord so that his hands are stretched out. Moses, the man of God, grew tired that is the human condition. But that's when his spiritual partners became critical in this story as they intervened to lift his hands to the Lord. You know, what a privilege it is this morning to understand that as children of God, we are not in this thing alone. Thank God for our brothers and sisters who help us win the battles of life. How many of you are the victim of somebody else's prayers down through the years? Thank God we are. Thank God people's prayers have had influence in our lives. Thank God people have held us up. Thank God people have encouraged us. Thank God people have strengthened us. Thank God for the body of Christ and the people of God. Amen. And thank God for the privilege of being able to encourage one another in the Lord. Aaron and her helped Moses that day. And they lifted his hands to heaven. And Moses' hands remained steady till sunset. Think about it. The connection, the conduit, the link, their lifeline to the power of God persisted and prevailed. Have you ever lost connection? <laughs> we know what it is. You know what it is to lose connection in a phone call, to lose connection in the Internet, to lose connection somewhere where, where the line between you and somebody else fails. But Moses was able, with the help of his brothers to keep his hands up in the air, persisting and prevailing all the way through the day. Moses' hands were lifted high toward the throne of God on high, says the Scripture. Though, think about it. Those three old men. <laughs> you know, the, old, the young guys were down in the valley fighting the battle. The old guys were doing what they did best. They were up there doing the spiritual warfare. And these three old men said, if this battle is to be won today, it'll be the Lord's doing, not ours. 
How many of you know it's wisdom to declare if we're going to make it, it's going to be by the help of God? That's wisdom. And Moses' hands remain steady. Get the picture now. Hands lifted up to the Lord all day long. The spiritual warfare was heavy. The spiritual warriors were helping. And they prevailed in prayer. They hung on to God. And when the day was done, the battle was won. It was a great victory that day. The big question now is, who will get the credit? Who will get the glory? Would Moses explain the victory away in natural terms? Would Joshua be the hero of the day? Would Aaron and Hur build themselves up? Would the army of Israel take credit? No. Moses would honor the Lord for the victory that day, for if it had not been for the Lord, there would have been no victory that day. Moses knew it, and he wanted to be sure that everybody else knew it. Our victory has come from the Lord. The battle, the brothers, let's think about their boasting that day. Their boasting. First of all, they recorded the story of the victory. Verse 13 says, Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it. <laughs> now think about this. Joshua was preoccupied in the valley below. <laughs> Perhaps he didn't have a clear view on Moses on top of the hill. And the, the Lord says to Moses, I want to be sure that Joshua understands what was really happening in this battle. He was engaged in the warfare, but make sure he knows that there was a higher power at work and that you were connected to the higher power. Write this down as something to be remembered. Make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. The Lord said to Moses, don't ever forget what happened here today. Write it on a scroll to be remembered. How many of you have a Bible this morning? Let your hand say amen. How many of you glad this story is written down in your Bible? Say amen. Moses obeyed the command of the Lord. He wrote it down on a scroll. God said, make sure Joshua knows every detail of the story. Don't let Joshua think the victory was won down in the valley. Don't let Joshua think this was the result of the strength of the military or the skill of the soldiers or the strategies on the ground. Don't let Joshua think that he accomplished this victory. Write it down. The battle was won in prayer. The battle was won in the spiritual realms. The battle was won with the hands lifted up to God. The battle was won by the Lord. And and Moses wrote it down in the record. This battle was won by the Lord. They wrote it down. And in the record, they recognized the source of the victory. Verse 15, Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. Everybody say that. The Lord is my banner. Moses built the altar, called it the Lord is my banner. He said, for hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. Now, what else can you do after such a powerful victory? Moses built an altar. <laughs> How many of you know when God does something awesome in your life, it's time to build an altar of worship to the Lord? Moses built an altar. They humbled themselves to worship the Lord. And Moses named the altar Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner, my banner. The Lord is the one who marches ahead of me into war. The one who prepares the way before me. The one who covers and protects me. The one who stands before me. My banner, my standard, my flag. My warrior, think about this. Think about this. The Lord is my buffer zone. Are you here? He is my buffer. As my banner who goes before me into battle, 
The Lord is my buffer zone between me and the enemy. And I want you to know that God is a mighty, powerful buffer zone. He marches out ahead of us to prepare the way before us. The Lord is my banner. And then Moses clarified the testimony and says, For hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. (laughs) God did this, Moses declared. And the Lord said, write it down and remember it. Never let it be said that you won your own battle. Never let it be said that you didn't need me, says the Lord. Never let it be said that you made it by yourself, that the Lord was not faithful to you, that I left you high and dry. Never let it be said that I failed you, said the Lord. But write it down for the generations to come. Amen. Write it down for Lowell Perkins. Write it down for Kim Dickey. Write it down for Teresa O'Neill. Write it down for the generation. Write it down so that it might be preached and proclaimed in the congregation at First Assembly in Jefferson City someday. Write it down for the generations to come. The Lord brought about this mighty victory. Oh, you know, think about this, friends. Because of the record of this mighty deliverance from God, you and I are sitting here in 2020 thanking the Lord and praising God for his mighty power and his great faithfulness. Everybody, lift your hands as they say, thank you, Lord. You are the Lord, our banner. You are our source of victory. Jesus' name, Write it down, says the Lord to Moses. The Lord was your shield and your fortress, your victory, your triumphant leader. Hallelujah. And I say to everybody in this sanctuary this morning, don't ever be guilty of robbing God of the glory for any advancement, any victory, any accomplishment, any blessing you experience in your life, give the glory to God. Praise his name. When you win a battle, tell how the Lord brought you through. (laughs) When, When you conquer sickness, tell how the Lord healed you. Amen. When you come through a financial crisis, tell how the Lord provided. Amen. When you come out on top, tell how the Lord did it for you. Moses said this battle was won because hands were lifted up to the Lord. Hands lifted up. That ancient custom that is still our practice today. Hands lifted up. You know, the lifting of hands is for pressing into the Lord in prayer. As we think about Are you listening this morning? As we think about the lifting of our hands to the Lord, I want you to know that that is not an assemblies of God thing. Are you here? I actually read, I was doing a little little searching this week. I actually read an article online this week that asked the question, well, should you be lifting your hands during the worship service in your church? What a ridiculous and unbiblical question. Are you here this morning? And and, and they tried to sort out whether or not this was a proper thing to do in the midst of worship. You know, friends, the lifting of our hands is an ancient custom. And it is our practice today because it is biblically prescribed. Listen to what the scriptures say about lifting our hands in prayer. Lamentations 2.19, pour your heart like water in the presence of God and lift your hands to him. Lamentations 3, verse 41, let us lift up our hearts and our hands to God in heaven. Psalm 28, 2, hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help, as I lift up my hands towards your most holy place. And then in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Timothy chapter 2, I want men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayer without anger and without doubting and disputing. Paul says, I want everybody to be lifting up their hands in prayer. Lifting our hands is for pressing into the Lord in prayer. It's a sign of stretching and reaching to God. 
It is an acknowledgement. Listen to me. That if we, if we don't get the help of God, we're not going to make it. But if we can connect with God, if we can plug into the source, then God will be enough for us. We lift our hands in prayer and lifting hands is, is for pointing to the Lord in praise. Psalm 63 says, I will praise you as long as I live and in your name I will lift up my hands. Psalm 141 says, may my prayer be set before you like incense. Listen to this. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Listen to that. May the lifting of my... How many of you want to please the Lord with a sacrifice of praise and worship? The psalmist says, May the lifting of my hands be a pleasing sacrifice to you, O Lord. I don't know why anybody would... I don't know why any Christian would resist that or reject that. May the lifting of my hands be pleasing to you like the evening sacrifice. And then Psalm 134 says, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. Moses said hands were lifted up to the Lord. I have a feeling Moses lifted his hands to the Lord often down through the 120 years of his life as he recognized that the Lord was his source he lifted his hands in prayer and he lifted his hands in praise to point to the Lord. They recorded the story of the victory. They recognized the source of the victory. And thirdly, they recognized the significance of the victory. Think about this. The story closes with verse number 16. The Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. Listen to this. This victory was a foreshadowing of many victories to come for the people of God as they would put their trust in the Lord, keeping their eyes on him, hands lifted up to the throne of God. Oh, don't you believe with me this morning that as we grab hold of God, God will be our victorious warrior, our banner who goes before us to fight the enemy on our behalf, who strengthens us for warfare, amen, who trains our hands and our fingers for battle, who pours into us wisdom and strategies to fight the enemy and to face the struggles of life. The Lord is my banner. We close this morning by taking a few more minutes to bring this ancient battle into our present reality as we think for a moment about the believer's battle. First, I want to say that our warfare is spiritual. The Word of God is clear Ephesians 6 12, our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Our warfare is spiritual. The next time you think about going out and bloodying somebody's nose, remember this, it's the devil who deserves a bloody nose. Yep, could I have a better amen? Sometimes we become feisty. But let us remember that the devil, the enemy, is the one who is seeking to destroy us and to devour us. Our warfare is spiritual. Why do we do war? Well, we battle to embrace the kingdom fully. Jesus said in Matthew 11, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forceful men Take hold of it. How many of you want every piece and part of the blessing of the kingdom of God you can get? Let me see your hand. I want to tell you this morning, if you're going to be 
fully invested in the kingdom of God, it's going to require spiritual battling and spiritual warfare. If you want joy and peace and righteousness, if you want your purpose in life to be fulfilled, if you want God's power to be living in your life, it's going to require pressing through in the battle and getting a hold of God. And listen, lifting your hands often to express your confidence and your need of the Lord. We battle to embrace the kingdom fully. We battle to expel the kingdom foes. James said if we'll submit ourselves to God, we can resist the devil and the devil will flee from us. And boy, don't you want the devil to get out of here? Say amen. We've had enough of his shenanigans. We've had enough of his trouble. We've had enough of the devil's discouragements. We have have had enough of the devil's deeds. We say, devil, get out of here in the name of Jesus. Jesus even said, in my name, you can cast out demons. You can have authority and you can have power over all of the works of the devil in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we do warfare to embrace the kingdom fully to expel the kingdom foes, and we do battle to expand the kingdom further (laughs) and to press out into territories beyond us to establish the kingdom of God. The apostle Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 2, we wanted to come to you. Certainly I, Paul, did again and again, but Satan stopped us. (laughs) Imagine that acknowledgement, that admission from the Apostle Paul. The devil stopped us in something we wanted to do. I I, I say to you this morning that as children of God, as people of the kingdom, we are marching forward, we are, are moving forward, and we need the power of God in our lives so that Satan does not stop us, so that we can advance the kingdom of God. Our warfare is spiritual. Secondly, our weapons are supernatural. 2 Corinthians 10 says the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. And as Christian believers, we do not march against the enemy with a sword or a machete or a pocket knife or a machine gun or riding in a tank but we come against the enemy with far more powerful weapons than those. We come against the enemy in the name of the Lord God Almighty, in the name of the Lord Jesus. We come against the enemy with the power of the word of God and the promises of God. We come against the enemy in prayer and with the power of the Holy Spirit and with the strength of the Lord and with the wisdom of God. We come against the enemy with praise and worship in our hearts and in our mouths and we declare the blood of Jesus prevails to win the victory. We come against the enemy with the mighty weapons of our warfare that are able to win us the victory. Our weapons are supernatural. Our warfare is spiritual. And thirdly, our warrior is strong and steady. Exodus 15 verse 3 says, The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. And then our scripture from today, Exodus 17, 15, The Lord is my banner. And I declare to you this morning, First Assembly, the Lord Jesus Christ is our banner. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. And the Lord Jesus is our banner. Jesus Christ paid the price for our victory on the cross of Calvary and in his resurrection from the dead that we might walk with God, that we could live in victory over the enemy, that we could live in God's freedom, that we could live in light and not darkness, that we could walk in forgiveness, that we could live in peace and not confusion so that we could spend our joy, our days in joy and hope and not in despair and so that we could look forward to the promise of everlasting life. Jesus marches before us in this world to fight the enemy off and to win the battle in Jesus' name. Jesus is my banner. Without him, I'm nothing. Without him, I'm hopeless and helpless. You want to know why I stand around here with my hands lifted up to heaven? It's because the Lord is my banner. My hands are lifted up to declare, I need thee. Oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee. And more than that, my my hands are lifted to say, I've got thee. Oh, I've got thee. Every hour I've got thee. Hallelujah.
I need you, Lord, and I've got you, Lord. Hallelujah. I need him to draw my next breath, to stand here today, to speak a word, to take a step, to make a move. I need the Lord to preach another sermon, another couple sermons today. I need the Lord, but I'm confident that the Lord will march before me and prepare the way. Give me the strength to do what I need to do. Hallelujah. I'm confident in the Lord today. In him I live and move and have my being. And every victory I win is his doing. It's his work, it's his blessing. And he, and he will get the glory. How about you? He will get the glory. Finally, this morning, all of this is why our worship is spirited. And Psalm 118 says, shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. We are quick to lift our hearts and our voices and our hands to the Lord our God in praise. He is the source of every victory and every joy. He is the Lord, my banner. Are you here today in the midst of a great battle? Lift your hands to the Lord and he will be your banner. Are you here today with battles won and victories accomplished? Lift your hands in praise to the Lord and give him glory in Jesus' name. He is the Lord your banner. Amen. Amen. Stand all across the...